Hi everyone, True Terrain Photo 2 just has been released and there are a couple of minor and a couple of larger innovations and improvements and today I want to invite you to join me um, in my creation of uh, another landscape and this time using the brand new height map uh, process where we are using a height map to uh, generate our terrain and then the process of uh, texturing it with true terrain and we can take a look at um, the new stuff from there so without further ado let's go to create landscape height map is activated and we have been supplied with a couple of height maps already they're 8k so we get a lot of detail embedded in those maps and i, I really um, encourage you to check them out i know for this video i want to go with the river canyon so just click on that and let's scale it up by a hundred and that's what we're getting so this is a very nice very impressive very quick <coughs> excuse me um, terrain so what we're going to do is find a proper camera angle for this scene that's a little bit too flat it's called river canyon so we will probably i think something like this might be looking good um, we are probably going to add some water in here as well so I have this cliff over there and what we could also do is play around with the amount with the focal length so this is what we're getting right now so if we're moving this a little bit down like so let's go to 20 and move a little bit in like so probably move this over here this is always a little fiddly but in the end your camera perspective is really really important for your overall look okay so that's that let's get out of lock camera to view so what to do next so the first thing i want to show you is that um, if you take a look at your terrain and you've got your displacement modifier in here um, we have scaled this up by 100 and if we're going to use you know what i still want this like like so uh, sorry if um, we are going to apply assets like trees rocks whatever we will struggle with the scale of 100 so what we always should do is apply our scale and that's what we're doing control a scale and our terrain is gone which has something to do with how blender um, works with displacements but we have lost nothing because the only thing we need to do is go into our modifier stack and just put the hundred in here and our terrain is back so we what we could do is we could apply this modifier and then this terrain would be the actual mesh we could do that I so what I want to show you is, however, that right now, and let's just play with the sun rotation a little bit, maybe like so, still have the sun in here, maybe bring this up a little bit, something like this. Let's do a quick render of this. This should be fairly quick. And um, what you can see is more or less um, a couple of things. The first thing is that um, I have some fog glare in the compositor on and I also have mist pass on but that's what we're going to check later on. But the thing is in the end, let's just make this a little bit larger, move it over, yeah, move 
this over here and the render is pretty much what you see in your viewport. This is of course not the information you get from, not all of the information you get from your height map. To bring this out you need more mesh. So what we're going to do is go into our modifier stack and add a subdivision surface modifier. But we do not want the, the subdivision to be applied to the already displaced plane, but on the plane itself. So what we need to do is take our subdivision modifier and bring it up to position one. And what you can see already is we're getting more geometry. So this is level viewport one, and I'm going to give this a render of level three. So the great thing about that is we're getting all the details in the render and we can actually deactivate it in the viewport and still have um, a pretty decent speed uh, when working with that. But what we're going to do now is we have had the first render with no subdivision, which is what we see in the viewport. And now we move this to slot two and do another render. And if this takes a little bit longer than expected, because subdivision three will take some time for sure, um, I will show you with the result now. Look at it. This is the result of subdivision level three. Just to remind you, that is one. Let's make this obvious. This is one and this is two. Look at that geometry and the details we get in there. What this also means is if we have the geometry in the mesh already, we don't need to apply a lot of displacement to the mesh itself. So um, let's go to three when we do the next one. So what we're going to do now is we are going to apply our first materials. So as always, add material, nothing new. Um, let's find something out of the desert pack and find something rough and dark or something, there's a brown, something like this. Um, the scale of the material displacement, as I said, we should not overdo it. Probably two will suffice and we can check that later. Now in the settings, as always, for me, the most important one are shader and texture mapping in the beginning. So over here we have a scale of 100. I usually go 10 above half of my scale. That's my personal rule of thumb. So let's start with 60 in here. And this already looks okay. I see some texture tearing here, which can be fixed by go into your advanced settings and set the blend texture to zero and they're gone. Um, now displacement, I go with 0.2 for now, which gives me a bit of displacement in the viewport, which will be then just, you know, multiplied a couple of times um, due to the subdivision modifier. Okay, so this is our ground. Maybe make it even a little bit larger so it gets no probably smaller yeah that looks good that looks good and now we're going to apply so before we do that I click on copy so all well, don't need to um, add any of these settings just click OK and then all these settings we have done here will be taken over if we go to um, cliffs we're going to add some cliffs and click our three points here, paste, and the material has all the settings of the ground already applied to it. So let's double check. That should be 0.2 and that should be 40. Let's have a look. And it is right. 
Now, it, so what kind of material are we going to take here? Let's stay with the desert pack and take this one, a personal favorite of mine. And this looks good. Just make it a little bit larger. Let's go with 80 here. Right, okay, maybe, maybe 65, something like this. Okay, and last but not least, increase the amount of ground we can get here. And you know already by now, this is the blending setting. Go to basics, reduce this to 0.2. So the ground cliff coverage and make the edge bleed a little bit larger like 0.6 and you see everything that is black will be our ground everything that is white will be our cliffs so let's see if this worked out and it did and it did pretty well i'm not sure about the lightning yet because a lot of it um, of our scene is in the dark but what we're going to do again now is do a test render Again, let's hit F12, and if it takes a little bit longer than a couple of seconds, I'll present you with the results now. So this is our result. It took 2 minutes 15 seconds in um, optics, and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. You know, the lens, um, the, the fog flare and the mist pass, which we haven't set up properly, works brilliantly. However, uh, I don't think we need to do a, a, a lot to it. However, I can't stop here. So we're going to do a couple of things more. First of all, we're going to add some water. We are going to create a background terrain. Um, so the sky is not um, as empty and maybe we're going to scatter some assets as well and take a look at the modifiers as well. So um, happy if you would join me in part two of this video, which you can find in my playlist and my channel. Hope you like it and see you in a bit. Thanks. Bye.